Um, Natsuko, are you okay with going ahead and in, in continuing to add that link to the chat box for people who are logging in so we can go ahead and get started? Yes, gotcha. All right. So welcome everybody. We are tag teaming today, Natsuko and I, as your baristas. Um, <laughs> we spent a lot of time at Starbucks over this summer, so we thought, why not do a coffee hour and join everybody in the network together over some work that we had been um, focusing on earlier at our last quarterly meeting, and um, that has been a hot topic within the network over the last year or so. So welcome. Um, last time I will say the menu is interactive so if you haven't had a chance to sign in or um, check out the twitter chat that took place last week incorporate some of your thinking into think about review the pain points um, the job a good time is just there for us to make sure that we all have a good time and take care of ourselves as learners today so let's look real quick at the agenda and the purpose of today is we, we've had conversations around really connecting the variability of equity and inclusion and go beyond that UDL 101 that we've um, been focusing on um, just because of a lack of time to come together as a network. And so Natsuko and I were like, well, let's just bring everybody together for a coffee hour. We have this thing called pop-ups. <laughs> let's take it to leadership and see. So um, we really wanna take action beyond the scope of individual practice and look at how we can come together as a community of learners to um, embark on this endeavor. So Natsuko was kind enough to coordinate um, this agenda that's in front of you that has the main engagements that we'll be working on throughout this next hour and the related resources. Now, of course, you have your table of contents or outline along the side of your document to follow along. And everything that we need is in this interactive meeting map today. Yay! <laughs> if you can get to the Google, yeah, if you can get to the Google Doc, you've got everything. And if you can't, we can download it and send it to you. Because um, <laughs> nothing is more frustrated, right? <laughs> <laughs> okay. He got you back. Yep. Yes, I do. <laughs> so Natsuko, do you want to go ahead and um, look at the goals and objectives with everybody? Yes, let's go for it. So uh, if you scroll down and next page, you see, well, on the screen as well, our goals and objectives. So goals is our espresso, op espresso options. Here are some focuses that we are gonna brew under pressure, uh, that being brewing under pressure. So the goals to is to discuss how UDL can be leveraged to reduce barriers to equitable and teaching and learning, engaging network driven process connecting to the UDL HG values. And we are gonna discuss the value uh, in the following slides by sharing our expertise, experience, and considerations and grow in our application of UDL in higher education to address equity and inclusion. Uh, that's the topic of today's meeting and explore how issues around equity and in inclusion intersect with the UDL principles. So we're gonna review the pain points and then see where we are and where we are gonna be and then uh, discuss the gap between them. And these are the objectives. So to boost your UDL HE energy with a shot of equity and inclusion focuses to kickstart the dopamine in your brain. And I love how these are phrased and thanks to Anne. <laughs> and uh, we connect the variability of equity and inclusion to go beyond UDL 101 and then take action beyond the scope of individual practice. So do you want to go for it in the next slide? As being a connecting piece between work. Oh, yes. I'm sorry. I think I have like a low um, access today. So on my bandwidth. So I apologize. Um, so let's go to the diversity and UDLHE. Um, we definitely see today as being a touch point in the work that we're all doing, not only in the network, but in our professional lives. And I wanted to make some connection to the registration information that we received. So um, 
as of Friday afternoon, um, towards the end of the day, Friday, we had 47 people registered for the workshop. And obviously there's been more because we have 48 people <laughs> with us today, but um, those 47 responses, those offer representation from 47 individuals. But we also have 36 universities that are represented. And that's the different contexts that we're engaging through today. So it's always nice to be mindful of that when we're in conversation that someone may be approaching through a different lens. And then the blue is in representation of um, responsibilities and roles. And we have 31 different perspectives being shared. So from those 36 universities and 47 individuals, um, or 47 responses, I'm sorry, we have um, 31 perspectives that were shared. Now you're like, how did we get 31 perspectives if we have 47 individuals? Obviously not everyone completed every question in the registration. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm sure that those other 16 plus um, additional people who are joining us today have their own perspectives that are gonna be included in the conversations. So we welcome you. Um, what we did was to begin our brainstorming conversations around what today would look like. Natsuko and I took the, um, the main areas of our um, vision and uh, our network um, charter information. And we broke that down into, well, we're focusing on variability, individuality and, and inclusion today specifically, but all of those other areas build into that. So it's cyclical within the main page of our website, but we wanted it to be more like a web today where with the variability, individuality and inclusion and the, um, as the main focus and the other areas building into it. So in our conversations, we'll be incorporating intellectual generosity and the context that we're in, like I just mentioned earlier, also that institutional and um, corporate independence, because we all know that we all have different guidelines and rules that we work with them while we service the children, um, students, not children, adult students across not only the US but internationally with our colleagues. So the document that we had mentioned earlier with the menu was the think about, and we really do want you to use this interactive feature of the meeting today and incorporate your thinking and wondering. So you can come back to this one and there will be ones built into your breakout sessions. So Natsuko, we are doing awesome on time, but I wanna make yes. sure if anybody needs some clarity, um, drop that in the chat box or just unmute your mic and let us know now before we move into the next section of our meeting. Okay. And thank you, Dan, for dropping that link for interactive meeting doc access. If you just joined, you see the screen and exact the document that we're showing on the screen will be access, accessible through the link that Jen sent in the chat box. Okay. So I don't see any notes in the chat. And I think that we're ready to get you all in conversations. Um, so connecting to that May 18th meeting, as well as um, that intention of going beyond a baseline or UDL 101, we coordinated some materials from that last meeting into areas for breakout groups that engage with access, build, internalize, and then all, and what we thought was important was rather than assigning people to different areas, we wanted to give you an opportunity to select your own breakout rooms so that you can um, have conversations around what most um, stands out to you or what most would be impactful for your practice right now. So we are not going to assign you rooms, but we have 
the intent, I'm, I'm saying this out loud because I was the one that was going to set up the rooms, <laughs> but the intention was to have a main room here where Jen offered to stay for people who wanted to just have an open conversation around um, the pop up today. And then we have one room that will be labeled access, one that will be labeled build, one that will be internalized, one that will be all guidelines, and then an extra room. will be overflow because if we have 25 people go into internalize you might want to split into two groups um, just to make the conversations more um hear more voices while you're there so within each of those breakout rooms you're going to have your think about questions and your um materials so let me show you what that looks like real quick and then we'll verify with jen if we have the um, breakout rooms the way that we need to um, so if, if we were all going into room one, you have the pain points from our last quarterly meeting, the May 18th meeting here, and Natsuko and I just did some brainstorming with some qualitative research approaches to categorizing these areas. Of course, what's going to be important is the rich conversation that takes place, and you might not agree with where we place something, and that's okay. Um, it's for you all to have a conversation around equity and, and inclusion in relation to these pain points that we saw stood out within the area of access. And while you're doing that as a group, we wanted you to be able to look at these think about questions and really capture your thinking um, around the gaps or potential gaps that exist in terms of using UDL in your higher ed setting um, as a lever for equity and inclusion. We also want you to look at um, focusing on particular pain points or clusters of pain points and how you might apply UDL for equity and inclusion. Um, what resources would help, what data would need to be collected or examined. And again, we don't want you to only take that individual perspective. We want to come together as a network and look at what commonalities do we have to work on to take on this feast of equity and inclusion. Um, and then what barriers require further prompting by the guidelines? And just to give you a little heads up, after we have that breakout time together, we're gonna come back in um, a whole group, but you're going to have time to interact with each of the areas on your own by doing a gallery walk. So if you spend your time in the access room, you will have time to visit the build or internalize or all across. So um, don't worry if you feel like, wow, I've got build and internalize that I'm really most interested in and I can't be in two rooms. Um, you will get a chance to go in and look at those notes that were taken by the group that was there. And of course, this is a living document. So you'll have access to it and we'll be able to um, reflect at a deeper level um, on an ongoing basis. So. So know that we'll come back together for um, part one of considering the um, intersections and then also a part two for bringing it back to network perspectives. But for right now, fingers crossed that we have rooms that we can go to to interact with these materials. Do we, Jen? Yay, she's nodding her head, yes. <laughs> Natsuko, I'm so happy. <laughs> okay. All right. Let's see. <laughs> yes. Yes. So what you can do, um, we're going to, I always like to use odd time frames so that we know um, it kind of stands out. So until 1.33, feel free to um, select the room that you want to go to for breakouts introduce each other very quickly and um, get busy with your conversations around the guideline area that you'll be focusing on. And then we will give you a warning. Um, Natsuko and I are going to be popping in and out of each room so we can answer any questions or um, listen into the great conversations as well. Natsuko, did I miss anything? I think you covered them all. Perfect. Awesome. Okay, guys, so Jen, if the um, breakout rooms are available for our participants to view, 
Um, you can go ahead and go into those rooms at this point, everybody. And if for some reason you have an older version of Zoom and you're not able to choose, um, you can just send me a message or unmute and I can move you into a room. Thank you, Jeff. I have a quick question for the facilitators. If I'm interested in kind of like the higher level, how to talk about this with leadership, how to um, articulate very succinctly the connections between UDL and equity and inclusion, which breakout would be the best for that? And I think you're muted. So well, I was saying she you 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 broke up. So I think you were asking about which would be the best to speak about equity and inclusion with yep. UDL, but I don't know with the context. I missed. Oh, so, sorry, sorry. No, I was saying um, to make the connection with leadership in a very succinct way. Um, you know. Like just being an instructional designer, I of course know <clears throat> the connections, but trying to find a very succinct way to help leadership understand that these are not two completely separate initiatives. So we have this diversity, equity, and inclusion office over here. And then on the other side, we have UDL, which is what I do, and trying to help them understand that we can work collaboratively and we don't have to have these two separate initiatives. And I can't figure out a way to kind of succinctly articulate that. And so I was wondering mm -hmm. which group might be the best for that. That's a great question. And you know, I feel you because when I was in the K-12 system as a coordinator for my district, um, I was moved as MTSS coordinator um, between the um, exceptional student education, one year professional learning the next year, curriculum and development the next year, and um, I was like, okay, spending equal time with all of them, right? While leading and um, facilitating the school board and the superintendent's team on MTSS in the district. So, um, so I completely understand. I would think for the purpose of today and the way that we organized it, and Natsuko, you tell me if you have a different perspective. I think that all across room yeah. would be really powerful powerful for you because it would um, look at access and building and internalizing um, across, you know, more of a systems approach kind of is how we looked at that. Um, there would be value definitely in all three, all four, but um, maybe the across room you would want to jump into first. Uh, uh, what did you say? Across? Of yes, course. all across. So that's where we found it. We find oh. items that, um, we were like, oh, this isn't really heavy on access or heavy on build or heavy on internalize. We can see a good argument for all of those areas. And so um, we made an all across category. It does say all guidelines, by the way. Yeah. Oh, guidelines. okay. As opposed to Got all it. across. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'm looking in the breakouts and I'm like, oh, <laughs> like that's not in it. Oh, okay. That's I okay. I didn't look at the breakout room sign ins yet. I was looking at the outline over here. Okay. Um, All right. Perfect. Perfect. Yeah. Thank you. Enjoy. Thank and you let us know. Okay. All right. Okay. I'm going to go jump into a room for a minute. Unless oh, yeah. Which one are you going in? I'm going to, I think, go from opposite side. I guess I can go from the room four and then climb up. Okay. And I'll go from room one. Okay. See you later. See you later. Jen and Elizabeth, did you all need me to move you to another room? Or did you just want to hang out in here? Because both are okay. Oh, Jen's gone. Now it's Elizabeth. Ah, oh, there they go. So, are you able to get to where you can move back and forth? I'm not. <laughs> so, thanks. Sorry. Sure. Was, <laughs> I'm like, you so. should be. So, okay. So, down at the bottom, do you have a breakout rooms option? I have, yeah. I have the, um, I think 
I have the breakout rooms open and okay. it's like unassigned, but my name is not there. And then it shows me who's in what rooms, but it doesn't give me an access to join. And then at the very bottom, it has an overflow room that's empty. And then it says broadcast message to all and close all rooms. Okay, so on the right side of each room, it doesn't say join in blue. No. Okay, that is really strange because yeah. I made you the co-host, let me think. I don't know how else to do that. Um, I mean, I can just make you the host. It's okay. I'm going to just send a message to the rooms, letting them know that they all have screen share options, you know, so that they can have a member of the, and it's okay. Thank you though. I don't but, I mean, I can, I can put you in a room if, if you wanted to start in one of them. Yeah. After I send this message, mm -hmm. let's do that. And then I'll just leave that room. Sounds good. Thank you. Okay, if you don't mind dropping me in that first room. Mm -hmm. Do you want me to keep time and shut it down at 133 or do you want to come back and tell me? I think I can exit it, can I? And it'll pop oh, back into the yeah, room. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, so if you don't see me back in like five minutes, then. <laughs> okay. Thank you. It's a timer.
Hi. <laughs> We're being recorded, Jen. Um, could you bump me into room two, please? Yep. Thank you. Uh -huh. Oh, maybe. Oh, hang on. Oh. Well, where did... oh, there you are. Room two. All right. Thank you. Mm hmm.
I'm just back because I know what they're gonna. <laughs> Did you happen to send a message to the rooms? Mm -mm. Oh, okay. You wanna? I can do that. Really quick. Just because I don't like it when it's like a. All of a sudden, the room's closing up. Oh right, right. <laughs> Hi, everybody. I'm back. <laughs> hey, I just gave the rooms, the people that are still in the rooms, there were some really great conversations going on, as would be like, I'm not shocked. Um, <laughs> and so um, Jen just, I gave a 60 second and Jen just sent the message so that mm. they, because I'm still having a funky interaction with the platform. So we're just going to move on with it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Zoom is not for us to understand, y'all. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Trying to make logic out of something that's illogical. Let me share my screen again so that we can jump right back in. And I can see the Okay. I think we could have probably done those conversations just in that cluster for an hour, Natsuko. Mm. Like, you know, yeah. like, there were some really, <laughs> but you know, it's a yeah. connecting point. So yeah, definitely. I was going to overstay in one room and then like move to another room. And then I almost forget to leave the room because so many <laughs> good things happening and conversation going. Absolutely. Yeah. It was a good savoring. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Stick with our coffee theme. Yeah. <laughs> there was a lot of brewing going on. I can say that for sure. <laughs> the room right. coffee here. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. I had to switch to water. I already had a couple cups of coffee today and I usually don't have more than one. So it's a big mm -hmm. one when I do, but I usually don't have mm -hmm. more than one. Mm -hmm. Okay, we have a lot of people are back and I wanna make sure that we honor the um, reflection time. So remember this was an opportunity for us to brew the flavors at hand um, and do some customizations or conversations around um, those to support our growth as a network and in our professional endeavors um, with um, DEI. So what we're going to do is, I don't know about you guys, but on my coffee app, I have favorites and I go right to them. And, um, and I want to make sure that we have time to individually um, really like take in everything that we focused on. I, I was going to try to keep going with the coffee, but it's too distracting to me. So <laughs> I'm going to, I'm going to just say, um, we set up a gallery walk now time for you to individually reflect on those um, conversations that took place and were captured in the notes from each section. So how we envision this portion of the time going is for, an, you know, about, about eight, seven, eight minutes. Um, we want to look at um, what we some take, what are some things that you still want to percolate on, um, something that you learned based off of those notes and conversations that are taking place. And, and this is just for you. There's a note section for you to add your thinking so that we have it present when we're having conversations around the topic in the network. Um, but really just take these next few minutes to either go back to the room you were in and continue to think about it or go to some of the rooms that you weren't able to visit. We're not going to physically go there in breakouts. We're just going to go there in the interactive document. So you can mute your microphones. You can chat in the chat box with each other. Um, we'll do this whole group and we'll um, come back at 1.44 to continue into part two of this reflection portion. Natsuko, anything? Oh, it could be only my screen, but would you mind scrolling down and then go to part one? Yep, that's it. 
there we go. This is what we're doing now, folks. Yep. Thank you for catching that. All right, teamwork. Yep. We'll give you a minute warning just before 1.44.
We have just about one minute, guys. Okay, I still see some interaction going on. I'm like looking on multiple screens while, while trying not to laugh at poor Jennifer with her fire drill going on in her building right now. I'm so sorry you're experiencing that. Um, so this was an independent reflection time and I'm gonna just um, share with you all where we were um, because some people aren't familiar with a gallery walk. Um, you know, if you've been to a museum and you do a walkabout and explore the art that is available for your pleasure and, and engagement and read the tags, whatever your approach is, when you go to an art museum, a gallery walk is the same kind of thing. It's where you just reflect on the um, conversations or work that has taken place so far. So um, we did that by going into this section that we had just engaged in, connecting variability, where we were um, brewing up the flavors and customizations of our work in higher ed with um, DEI. And we were doing that by going to those pain points and notes that each group had worked within. So that's, this is um, the access that's on the screen right now. And then the build, and then the internalize. We've had some great conversations in this short amount of time. Um, the all across guidelines um, is here as well. And we were just completing part one, which was that reflective part. And we're gonna go into part two now, which is considerations for intersections with UDL equity and inclusion. And I know um, something that was brought up within one of the breakout groups that I got to pop into and then also um, was mentioned in the chat box during the independent reflection time was the um, presence or not presence of disability within equity and inclusion, um, which you might think, well, what do you mean? Because I like in one of the conversations, they were like, what do you mean disability isn't being incorporated into those conversations? But for some, it isn't. And I think that that's an important thing because we want to make sure that anyone who's been marginalized is incorporated into our conversations. So that was a really great point that stood out to me. Um, something else that stood out was um, the language of um, how do we get people to buy in? I hear that a lot. How do we get people to buy into UDL who maybe aren't in our department or aren't in our roles or um, we're just kind of discombobulated across our campus? And it really is about changing that mindset from buying in to owning it, right? And when we get it into policy, that's important because policy becomes a um, long-term presence. But if we don't move from policy into practice, or professional learning or procedures, then it's just going to be there in namesake. So what was important to Nisuko and I was that we come together for this part two and just take a few minutes to work as a resource and possible work groups moving forward. We've got a lot of information there. Um, think about those think about questions and go into this text box that's on my screen. And um, what's, 
whatever stands out to you. You don't have to stop and start in the first cell. You can start in the bottom cell. Um, but we just had these two questions around the strengths that the UDL princi principles offer equity and inclusion in higher education, as well as how we might strengthen those principles to offer a more equitable and inclusive higher education. So we wanna know the strengths and then we wanna know what can we do um, in a more efficient, effective, um, productive way to have a more cohesive practice going on. So think that and type in these cells, your ideas and suggestions, because it's always important for us to have your voices to build off of. Natsuko, anything yep. that? Okay. Oh, yeah. Um, if uh, uh, you can't find the uh, Google Doc, I can drop the link again, or you can also put in the chat box and we can save that and transfer that to the doc so we can share in the same one document. Operationalization, I see. The autonomy and agency for student learning is essential. I think that's essential for faculty members and um, every, every staff member as well, the opportunity for autonomy and agency. As somebody pointed out, we're all learners. Absolutely. The day I stop learning is the day I stop breathing. Sometimes it's lessons that I don't even know I need to learn, right, Donna? <laughs> We're just gonna take like three more minutes. Okay, 
If you're typing, go ahead and finish up that thought. I just want to make sure that we honor your time here today, guys. And um, something that really stood out to me, there was a conversation in the chat box about access and being proactive about it in advance rather than focusing on it or adapting. And if you've not seen, and if you have, I apologize for bringing it to your attention again, but David Rose has an amazing interview where he speaks to the physical school environment in our K-12 systems and um, in how much growth we've made in that area, right? We used to not even be able to get in the door of the building. And it is shameful that we're still working on, now we're in the door and there's other environmental factors that in a way from the time past since that. But what we need to remember and um, what I've always looked at is I look at the, I call it the acronym, CADIA, sorry about that, um, <laughs> ISIL, where I look at the instruction, the curriculum, the environment, the learner, and the organization. And I look at how can I do the most? What can I most alter within my role, within my system that I'm currently in while I'm changing that system, right? So um, you can't do it all at one time. And as a network, we can't do it all at one time, but we can definitely come together and um, join forces in this, in this important, important work around ensuring that um, every student, regardless of their age and how many years it takes them, um, and contribute to society in a way that they can be most proud of. So what we wanna do now, and that's super, was there anything that you wanna to add to that or before we go into our closing? Yeah, um, um, no, I, I'm just, you know, restating what you just stated, you know, join the force and this conversation continues. So that's gonna be the segue to the staying connected. Yes. <laughs> Good segue. Okay, so um, this is an ongoing conversation, and if you're not on Twitter, it's okay. We'll talk to you on LinkedIn. We'll talk to you um, if you want to uh, message us, like email us through the platform, email each other. Um, I think we need to strengthen our networking outside of um, relying on a quarterly meeting to be met. You know, we, we are all looking at different areas and if you see commonalities or you see a conversation that you wanna continue, do that um, and then bring that to the next quarterly meeting. Um, I am currently working on some research, uh, equity gap research, and I have a nine question teaser test that if you're interested in contributing to, the link there is um, the bit.ly equity gap. And I would really appreciate that. And then um, getting ready to do some work on mindset shifts. And the next quarterly meeting, we talked a lot about our last quarterly meeting. Well, our next quarterly meeting is going to be a design lab. And that's on September 15th at 12 o'clock Eastern Standard Time, I believe. Um, that's the time zone that we're gonna be in. And then also any updates and things that are um, currently happening, you can find at the UDLHE website. So um, loved having this hour with you guys. It always goes so much faster than I think it's going to go. Um, Natsuko, if you wanna go ahead and close us out. Yeah, thank you for um, uh, being here today. And I, we respect your time and we have three minutes to go until two, but um, um, the link that, um, and uh, links to their bit LY is also under the very last page, contribute to a current research project. And that's the direct link. You can click that. And the UDLHE website is also under the, uh, the last link. You can click that link and let's continue this conversation. And um, I believe that the, um, the quarterly meetings um, may also address these uh, continued conversations too, so. Great. All right. So if you want to hang out for a little bit and chat, you have some questions or considerations, um, feel free. Otherwise, thanks so much for giving us this hour today, guys. We look forward to seeing you in September. Yes. So great seeing you.
everybody. Thank you all. Have a good one.